The pink letter has stood as a mystery for the past decade at this point. John's storyline is a massive portion of A Dance with Dragons, and at its climax, in its 13th chapter, he receives a letter that is supposedly from Ramsay Snow of Winterfell, claiming that a number of outlandish events have happened. We know for a fact that some of these events seem to directly contrast with what is actually happening based on point of view chapters, both from Dance and that have been released as samples from The Winds of Winter so far. So this, combined with several elements of the letter itself, contrasting earlier letters from Ramsay, make the reader think that this letter might not entirely be the truth. Tormund even points it out as a skin of lies, potentially. So, in order to figure out the truth of this letter, many fans have speculated as to its true author and to that author's true intent. A number of the candidates will be gone over today, in addition to the candidate that I personally believe is most likely to have written the pink letter. Before discussing theories as to potential authors, it's important to discuss what makes the pink letter suspicious. In A Dance with Dragons, we see two previous letters penned by Ramsay Bolton, and they are all quite distinct. These two other letters are almost identical. One is in Asha Greyjoy's point of view. One is in Jon Snow's point of view. Both have a button of hard pink wax with the Bolton seal on it. Uh, it is penned in a huge spiky hand. It is written in brown ink that Asha thinks is blood. Uh, and overall, it just tends to have a very similar tone throughout. The tone matches the pink letter, but a lot of these small details do not. Additionally, it is signed not only by Ramsey Bolton, but by several of his contemporaries, notably uh, Dustin, Oriswell, some Umbers, uh, some other northern lords who are currently serving him. However, the pink letter has none of this. It has a smear of pink wax, whereas it does not have a tight pink button. The handwriting and the ink is not remarked upon. It is just signed by Ramsey. And overall, it is just generally a fairly suspicious letter. Even Tormund points out that it might be a skin o lies. And right now we're going to get into actually the letter itself and reading through it before continuing any discussion. Of the it. pink letter reads, Your false king is dead, bastard. He and all his hosts were smashed in seven days of battle. I have his magic sword. Tell his red whore. Your false king's friends are dead. Their heads are upon the walls of Winterfell. Come see them, bastard. Your false king lied, and so do you. You told the world you burned the king beyond the wall. Instead, you sent him to Winterfell to steal my bride from me. I will have my bride back. If you want Mance Raider back, come and get him. I have him in a cage for all the North to see. Proof of your lies. The cage is cold, but I have made him a warm cloak from the skins of the six whores who came with him to Winterfell. I want my bride back. I want the false king's queen. I want his daughter and his red witch. I want this wildling princess. I want his little prince, the wildling babe. And I want my reek. Send them to me, bastard, and I will not trouble you or your black crows. Keep them from me, and I will cut out your bastard's heart and eat it. Ramsay Bolton, true-born lord of Winterfell. So this contrasts a lot of what the reader is told throughout A Dance with Dragons about the Stannis cause and about the events in and around Winterfell. Most notably, we don't know that the battle in the ice has even happened yet, and it seems that when it does happen, Stannis will be quite likely to win it. This is the main element of the letter that seems to be a factual inaccuracy, in addition to just generally being fairly strange in a lot of regards, both for Ramsay and for just any person in the North in general. Also notable is the fact that uh, Ramsay's preferred method of torture is flaying people, whereas this was not done to Mance nor Stannis's supposed friends in the North. So let's do a bit of a rapid fire round and go through some people who could be the authors but seem less likely. Firstly is Stannis Baratheon. Stannis is currently in the field as of the last time we see him in a Theon chapter of The Winds of Winter, and he seems like he desperately needs assistance from anyone. This letter very much has a clear motivation from Stannis as he would want to get Jon to come down and help him, but it is uh, difficult to actually have the opportunity to write this letter given Stannis' dire straits, in addition to the fact that this would not really help him very much as the battle is Quite imminent as of the last time we see or hear from him, and I don't think that John would be able to reach Stannis in time to make any meaningful difference. Mance Raider is another candidate. He seems to be a large focus of the letter, and many of the phrases in the letter, such as Black Crows and threatening to cut out his heart and eat it, 
seem to be in line with the wildlings point of view. However, the last time we see Mance in dance, he does seem as though he is in a bit of dire straits as well. His rescue attempt is successful in so far as Theon and Jane are freed from Winterfell. However, it did seem to go wrong afterwards, and it does seem quite likely that Mance has been captured in some capacity or another. This brings into question Mance's opportunity to write the letter, as it seems he would not really have one. Melisandre is another candidate who is often floated as a potential author. However, a lot of this information is outside of Melisandre's scope, and it would take her visions becoming much more accurate than we see in her chapter to actually pull this off. And what's more, it does seem as though we would see some glimpse of this information in this point of view chapter we have from Melisandre's perspective earlier in A Dance with Dragons. The last person in this speed round is Ramsay Bolton, the actual author of the letter, or so it claims. Ramsay does have the means and opportunity to write this letter, as he would be the person that is uh, the author directly who would be telling the truth. However, then the actual discrepancies between Ramsay's previous letters and this letter are kind of strange to include by Martin. As having such detail on these two previous letters and having them be near identical to each other does seem to indicate that Ramsay has a very distinct style that he likely would stick to for this letter. What's more, some of these details don't add up. His favorite methods of torture are not used, and it does seem quite unlikely that no matter the kind of battle that takes place with Stannis, it does seem very unlikely that that battle would last seven days. There is one candidate who seems more likely than anyone else to have written the pink letter. This is someone within Winterfell itself who we already know has betrayed the Boltons. That man is Lord Wyman Manderley of White Harbor. We get to know Lord Manderley throughout A Dance of Dragons from both Davos' perspective and Theon's. We know for a fact that he is planning to betray the Freys and the Boltons on account of the events that happened in the Red Wedding. His entire plot with Davos revolves around uh, him swearing his allegiance to Stannis should Davos return Rickon to his rightful place in the North. Wyman's most sizable actions in our story so far have been those of deceit. We hear in A Feast for Crows that he killed the Onion Knight in order to prove his loyalty to the crown. However, we find out in A Dance with Dragons that this is false. He killed some other person and made this deal previously mentioned with Davos. Additionally, there's the whole incident with the Frey Pies, where he potentially kills three Freys and bakes them into pies for their family members and everyone into Winterfell to eat. Wyman Manderley is not above lying to preserve himself and his cause and to overall do anything to stop the Boltons. What's more, he is a Northman who might know that Jon Snow is someone who ha would have these loyalties to Winterfell. However, he doesn't know Jon Snow so well as to understand the full extent of what the Night's Watch is really ha going through right now, whereas someone like Mance would really know exactly what the situation there is. Additionally, we know for a fact that he knows that Mance is in Winterfell, so he knows that there is something with the Wildlings going on. However, he thinks that the Wildling princess and the baby, her uh, nephew, are important. We specifically see Jon having to explain to Stannis, a southern lord, that the position of king beyond the wall is not hereditary. Stannis knows this, as does Mance, but Ramsay doesn't, and Wyman doesn't. Wyman is a fairly southern lord for the north, and it would make sense that he wouldn't know the exact specificities of the position of King Beyond the Wall. Additionally, Wyman is just familiar enough with Ramsay to be able to create the exact pink letter. He was not someone who signed on to either of the previous two letters, so he's not familiar with the otherwise very distinct style of writing and having multiple people sign it and the button of hard pink wax. But he is very familiar with Ramsay Bolton's interpersonal style, manner of speaking, and whatnot. So he very much has the means and opportunity to do so, as well as the knowledge, given the fact that he is in Winterfell and has access to the same ravens that Ramsay would, as well as the same pink wax. It's also good to know that the phrase magic sword is only used a few times in our story, especially in A Dance with Dragons. It's used once in a conversation between John and Maester Aemon. It's used once in a conversation between Hisdar and Daenerys. And it is used once in the thoughts of Davos Seaworth just before he negotiates with Lyman Manderley. So, should this still have been on Davos' mind after his chapter ended, that phrase could have been passed along from Davos and placed into the mind of Lyman Manderley, hence it being used in the letter. 
Uh, additionally, this is not meant to be making a case for either John writing the pink letter himself or Daenerys writing the pink letter, as those seem, for some reason, fairly unlikely to me. Wyman also knows that Jane and Theon have escaped, but he also doesn't know that Stannis is the one who was able to rescue them. To him, it seems likely that they would have gone to John at the Wall, as Theon was raised with John, and Jane is supposedly Arya, and it would be good to get this fake Arya back to John. Wyman does not know that they were intercepted by uh, the guy from the Iron Bank, Tychonostorus, and taken to Stannis. So overall, this tracks with what is presented in the letter. The primary reason that Wyman Manderley would write the Pink Letter is the battle in the ice. You see, Wyman is in a very unique position when concerned with this battle. His forces have left Winterfell in order to partake in this battle alongside the Freys, so it's kind of a lose-lose for him no matter how it turns out. If Stannis wins, it's great. The North is freed from the Freys and from the Boltons, and his goal is achieved. However, it does seem like that his, a good amount of his forces would be killed in the battle. Additionally, should Stannis lose, his forces would still be depleted, and he will be no closer to freeing the North from the Boltons, whereas Jon Snow could be a very good backup plan for this. Both of these options would be greatly aided by Jon Snow and the Night's Watch coming to aid the cause of Stannis and of the North in and around Winterfell. This would give Wyman very strong motivation, stronger than anyone else, to write this letter. Many fans have discussed the idea of a grand northern conspiracy that is spanning the entirety of the north and trying to reinstall the Starks in power. It's unclear how much of that is true, but all of the real conspiracies that we, the readers, are aware of in the north tie in some way to Wyman Manderley. He is someone who seems to be masterminding this cause of reinserting the Starks in the rightful place. It is even said by Wyman himself to Rob in an earlier book, that he will have no one as loyal as Wyman Manderley, mostly because he is just that devoted to the Northern cause. Wyman Manderley is far and away the most likely candidate to have written the Pink Letter, as his motivations, opportunity, and means to do so all line up better than any other candidate. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. This is my first video of the new year. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hopefully having a great year producing content for you guys. Uh, I look forward to making many more in the future. Let me know who you think wrote the pink letter. On screen now, I've written who I think uh, wrote the pink letter in order of most likely to least likely. Uh, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, feel free to pitch ideas for new videos. I always love to hear those. And yeah, I really appreciate it. Be sure to like the video and subscribe while you're down there as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a great new year.